So we know that um, modern human behavior and anatomy evolved within the African Middle Stone Age in the last 220 or so thousand years. Since this finding, field projects in southern Africa at least have tended to focus on various aspects of this particular period. In contrast, the Acheulean directly preceding the MSA is traditionally associated with anatomically and behaviorally archaic species of the genus Homo. And in terms of field, fo uh, field focus, excuse me, in southern Africa at least, the two periods tend to be investigated in isolation of one another. Um, Monty Cave potentially provides an opportunity to break this trend in certain ways. Um, the cave was excavated in the early 1960s by Charlie Keller and others who were interested first and foremost in Achillean technology, but also in the use of space within the shelter by Achillean hominins. So Charlie and others excavated uh, huge um, uh, lateral areas of deposit and quite meticulously piece plotted all the cultural material. We were lucky enough to have one of the archaeologists uh, come and join us when we were digging last year and walk us through the stratigraphy, uh, Cedric Pochenpol, who dug in the early 60s. And this was useful because we were able to ascertain that they dug to pretty much the same sequence as we identified when we reopened the site. So it's an unusual and interesting sequence for a number of reasons. Uh, firstly, there's a very long uh, basal Acheulean sequence, uh, which is uh, followed by a substantial hiatus, which is up to a meter in certain parts of the cave. Then there's a later Acheulean sequence, and slap bang on top of that is quite a deep MSA sequence. So if you look conventionally at how the Acheulean and MSA contrast with one another, there looks to be a material culture that really varies within relatively uniform technological parameters on the one hand, which is succeeded by one pretty much characterized by quite unlimited cultural complexity on the other. Capacity aside, material culture variability is dependent to some degree on what's available, obviously, in terms of raw materials and resources, in particular environments, which makes holding constant aspects of spatial and environmental variability between different kinds of occupations quite useful. We know that Acheulean and MSA sites are, are obviously separated in time, at least in southern Africa, but Acheulean sites tend to be uh, found relatively ex exclusively in open context. In contrast, MSA sites, at least the key sites where we're able to get useful uh, contextual information from the sequences, tend to be associated with rock shelter occupations. And the few hominin remains we have from MSA sites in South Africa are anatomically modern. However, 99% of the rock shelters in Southern Africa bottom out at a maximum age of 150, 160,000 years, with the earliest technologies at these sites really looking nothing like the Acheulean. Montague has the two complexes in the very same place in the landscape, which is evidence that these two species occupy the same locality. And at least for now, the sequence seems to suggest that there wasn't a whole lot of time between the two occupations. We're looking at uh, variability within and between these occupations at Montague from multiple different angles by looking at the uh, two cultures, obviously their relationship in time to one another, the environments within which the deposits accumulated, the interactions of the different occupants of the site with the different environments and the technologies in space and time. This entails also looking at the micromorphology of the sediments, um, which for us, in terms of giving us information about the integrity of the deposits, really precedes any behavioral interpretation of the site. We're interested in the origin of the sediments and the implications of these origins for the contextual integrity of the artifacts. This entails also using other uh, proxies, various other proxies, such as phytoliths, to reconstruct the environment surrounding the cave, as well as the potential ways in which hominins could have been using uh, plant materials that were available in these various different environments. So we have people working on the dating of both the Acheulean horizons as well as on the, the MSA deposits. Um, for now, I have to say it's not really clear whether the Acheulean falls within the parameters of conventional OSL techniques or whether we need to uh, look at one of the more uh, experimental techniques that focus on fault spars, for example. We're also interested in the technologies uh, that hominins produced and used uh, during the different occupations of the site and how these technological behaviors varied through time. We're currently analyzing the artifacts from multiple different uh, uh, perspectives and pedagogical schools, including Chanel Peratois, as well as the three-dimensional geometric morphometrics of specific tool types at the site. Interestingly, the full biface production sequence is represented in both of the Acheulean levels at the site, which is evidenced by the morphology of the tools themselves, as well as the flakes associated with different phases of biface production. This includes the on-site production of large flakes from boulder cores, 
their shaping and thinning into LCTs, as well as the, even the scavenging and reworking of pieces. So they're extremely variable biface morphologies in their collection overall, but uh, the collections from the lower and upper Acheulean horizons uh, overlap completely with one another in morphospace. So within two assemblages of bifaces that occur across more than 2.5 meters of sequence, um, the structural variability is virtually uh, identical. The cave environment within which the uh, Acheulean cultural material accumulated was very different to the MSA. And at the outset, there looks to be a relationship between the bat guano deposits at the site and the Acheulean occupations that doesn't exist in the MSA. More than 275,000 artifacts were recovered from the initial very good excavation of the site, which we're currently analyzing uh, with our own uh, excavated assemblages. And I think it's important to emphasize here just how critical the older collections and documentation are for our ongoing work at the sites. And they really serve as examples of good field data, reproducibility, and sustainability. And the site's unique, I think, for a host of different reasons, but I'll just mention a few, including the stratification of MSA and Acheulean within the very same sequence, and the two different sequences of, um, of Acheulean. Uh, there's an opportunity, I think, in this respect to look at fairly complex population-level questions concerning the behavioral differences between modern and pre-modern populations in southern Africa, the factors associated with the end of the Acheulean and the relationship of this event with what came after. So we're currently excavating uh, again this year, November, December. And I just want to add quickly that I'm also interested in using the site as a vehicle for education and in training. And in this vein, uh, I would welcome motivated students who are interested in participating to contact us if they're interested in, in being involved. Thank you. Yes, we're currently looking at that. I can. I have to say, Vera Aldesh is working uh, on the micromorphology of the site, and right now, um, it's yeah, it's under study. I can't say much more. It's something we're working on. We don't have any conclusive results right now. Where is? Where are you? Right there. I listen. Yeah. Um, do you have any dates for the Mount Kikai sequence? Uh, no, we, we had a little bit of a hurdle with the dating of the site. Um, nothing to do with the potential for dating the site, but um, there's people working on the dates at the moment, and we would expect some results fairly soon. We have dosimeters in at the moment, and they're coming out in our, in our upcoming season. Uh, we have bone fragments in the micromorphological samples, but we have no complete fauna. Fred? Andrew. Who's Andrew? You're Andrew? I'm Lewis. Lewis. Lewis, sorry. Yep, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, go, I'll go for Andrew. Just throw it initially. Um, so 41%, you had 41.1%. Sure. You missed what that was. That was exhibital bending in humans, so 58% did it have it. So it, the 41% is actually in that whole sample of humans, how many of them had both rightward occipital bending and also the typical pattern of southern fishes, basically. Is that? Well, so that doesn't typify the whole sample. The majority did not have occipital bending? That's true, but in terms of those three variables, 41% is actually quite a good, in, in terms of those co-occurring, co co is actually quite, in individuals alone, quite a good proportion. Okay, somebody has a microphone? Yeah. All right. Could I ask Lewis a uh, quick question? Yep. Of course, in astronomy, we do have asymmetry. Mm -hmm. Philip Tobias has recognized asymmetry in Homo habilis. Mm -hmm. What do you think is the potential of applying your method to the astronomy of the sign in the class? So the problem, so there have been studies obviously on endocasts using um, self points, but I think the jury's still out as to what point is that 
and how and how much does it correlate to what we're finding actually in in an anatomy and the problem with human anatomy and, and anatomy generally speaking is that it's it's incredibly varied and incredibly nuanced and so the point is if based on endocast we, there's no guarantee that we can we can assure that silver fisher would actually be able to um for example push in push in enough so we get a, a, a reliable enough measure and then similarly for example bending uh, people have looked at things like patellia, so how much does the brain protrude out, and but actually how much does that relate to occipital bending? I, again, the kind of jury is open. Thank you. Well, we can't. <laughs> we can't. It's just like a coincidence between the climate change and, uh, and uh, that's further. We need to further study what were the developments, the specific developments that may have, uh, uh, cope with that climate change and, and see if there is an effective relationship between one and the other. Yes, yes, it's, yeah. <laughs> there was a question over there. Yes, that's. Yes, probably. Well, but that, there's also the possibility that um, uh, during that time period, uh, a lot of um, uh, post-positional uh, processes occur, and like uh, have washed all the, the sediments. Actually, there, there are a couple of papers uh, talking about that during the Army decline um, in that region. Um, in Valboa, in our site in southern Portugal, we, don't, we, we also don't have any, any uh, dates to that time period. So yeah, probably there's a, a coincidence between the, the, the dates and the, the age one. All right, thank you very much. Enjoy your coffee.